Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. I am here today to do my top YA books of 2015. Now this has been a ridiculously hard video to make because choosing just kind of my favourite top books has been impossible because there's just been so many books that I read this year that I've loved. This year has been really YA heavy for me. I kind of really fell in love with the genre this year. I have read so many books um, and to narrow it down to just a few has been really hard but I've kind of gone with the ones that maybe you haven't heard of. I'm kind of thinking that some of these you might not have heard of. I think actually that's a lot, you've probably heard of them all but I'm going to try and kind of go for ones that are a little bit more out there rather than kind of going for the obvious ones that everyone's probably heard of and that everyone has read. So I'm going to talk you through some of them now. Um, like I said, I've read so many this year that could have made it into my favourite lists. Um, YA is such a strong genre at the moment. There are so many fantastic authors in the genre. There are so many fantastic voices. There's just such a wealth of fantastic fiction that's coming out of the YA community at the moment. And authors are being braver and tackling more kind of taboo subjects, I suppose. You know, we're looking at authors who are talking more about um, bisexuality, um, transgender issues. Um, people that are kind of addressing more about rape and consent and sexuality and all those kinds of things so we really got a very fresh and new kind of YA community which I'm loving at the moment so I thought I'd talk you through some of the books that I've read and that I have loved so the first one I'm going to start with is one that probably everyone has heard of and it is Asking for it by Louise O'Neill. Now I have to admit that I haven't actually read Louise's first novel called Only Ever Yours and I have to say that's because I started reading it about three or four times and every time I've started reading it I've just put it straight back down again and I don't know why, I don't know what it is but I just don't seem to find it very gripping. But I was given Asking for it by the publishers and you know I kind of thought I'm gonna give it a go, it sounds like a really good premise, I'll see if I enjoy it or not and then maybe I'll go back and read Louise's first novel. So I read this and I felt sick the whole way through. It is just absolutely vile um, but in the best kind of way it's about a girl who is raped but then it kind of explores rape culture and victim blaming and consent and all of those really important issues that we kind of don't see surrounding rape a lot of the time. When it's in the news or when it's kind of talked about it's often very closed off and it's very kind of black and white you never see all of the things that are going on behind the scenes so it's really interesting to get a really good look at the kind of the way that people feel about rape and what I found the most frightening about this book I think was that I hated the main character and when she got raped I found it hard to sympathise with her and I genuinely for a few moments thought she deserved to be raped and I cannot believe that a book has made me think that about somebody because no one deserves to be raped, nobody deserves to be sexually assaulted or sexually abused but for some reason this character was so abhorrent and just disgustingly horrible that I didn't care that she'd got raped and that made me feel awful reading this book so as, as I read on I definitely changed my opinion, I definitely realised that you know that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people assume that because girls wear short skirts or because girls wear a lot of makeup or have got their boob, you know, they've got a low cut top or, you know, they just make themselves look nicer. That just automatically implies that they're looking for a man and they just want to be raped or, you know, they want to have sex with somebody when actually that's not true at all. But I think that's kind of the the way that a lot of people see it. You know, if you, if you hear of a girl that was raped because she was walking home on her own, she's wearing a short skirt, she was a bit drunk, a lot of people just say, well, she deserved it, she shouldn't have been wearing a short skirt, she shouldn't have been drunk. Um, so it's a really interesting look at all those opinions and how we should be looking and dealing with rape and teaching people about consent. So I could make a whole video about this, but yeah, definitely worth looking at. And I imagine a lot of people have already heard of this and have already read it. But if you haven't already, then I definitely recommend that you read this book and read it soon. <laughs> so that's Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. And after reading this, I definitely, definitely want to go back and try and read her first novel again. The next book I want to talk about is another one that you might have heard of, I'm not sure. I think the reason why I heard about this one is because the author used to be a, well she is, a women's fiction author. So I read a lot of women's fiction novels and she kind of turned to write a YA book. So I'm really excited because I love her women's fiction titles. And it is Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. 
What attracted me most though about this book is the character has anxiety and I have anxiety, I've had anxiety for a lot of years and I always love to find a book that describes anxiety and talks about anxiety in a very realistic way because a lot of the time in a lot of books that I've read anxiety is dealt with in the wrong way. Um, especially um, I read last year I read Zoella's book Girl Online and I was really frustrated because she suffers from anxiety herself and she'd written this book and she was saying oh you know it talks about anxiety and panic attacks but the reality of anxiety and panic attacks is very different from the reality that she presented in her book. Um, you know she, this character found a boy and she fell in love and she kind of felt that she was much better but that's not what it's like living with anxiety day in day out like that just doesn't happen you can have the perfect life and still have anxiety so I was kind of interested in reading this one because this was about a girl called Audrey and I'll just read you kind of the blurb it says Audrey can't leave the house she can't even take off her dark glasses inside the house a house that her totally chaotic but well-meaning family fill to the brim with their big personalities and loud voices then her brother's friend Linus stumbles into her life with his friendly orange sly smile and his funny notes he starts to entice Audrey out again well Starbucks is a start and with Linus at her side Audrey suddenly feels she can do the things she thought were too scary even when it's two steps forward and one step back suddenly finding her way back to the real world seems achievable be prepared to laugh dream and hope with Audrey as she learns that even when you think you have lost yourself love can still find you so I was excited about this because I really wanted it to be a good portrayal of anxiety and what it's like to live with anxiety especially being a teenager because I think when I was a teenager the anxiety was just so overwhelming because not only did I have this mental health problem I had the stress of growing up and being a teenager anyway um, but this kind of let me down as well a little bit because it kind of was like oh look you found a boy he likes you you like him well hey everything's fixed again that's not what real life is like However, I did really still enjoy this book, even if the portrayal of anxiety wasn't the one that I was hoping it would be. Um, I like the way that it's written in kind of different styles because her, the Audrey's um, therapist asks her to make this like documentary about her family. Um, so a lot of it is told through kind of script format because obviously that's when she's um, filming. And it's just a really nice kind of way of dividing the plot into different kind of sections and then there's bits where she's writing letters to Linus and things like that. Um, so it's a really, it is a really good book. Unfortunately not as good as I was hoping it would be but I definitely think it's one worth reading and definitely one that you should have a look at if you like um, kind of mental health based young adult fiction. So yeah, a good solid 7 out of 10 for me for that one. So that is Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. The next one, there is a little bit of a theme going on here. The next one is Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne, which is another book talking about anxiety and OCD and mental health. Um, again, this one, whilst being very true to life, um, it was a little bit difficult because I, I don't know what it is about fiction, but I think there's always this job in fiction to present life as especially young, young adult fiction, especially in women's fiction, there always has to be a sense of a happy ending or a sense of hope or a sense of everything's going to get better. And whilst that's really important with mental health, I think it's also good to show that even when you're better, things can get bad again. And that's what this book does. It's about a girl who has OCD and anxiety and she kind of feels like she's got better. She starts um, reducing her medication. She starts kind of getting back out into into the world and being who she was before but then she relapses and it starts to get bad again um and I think it was well done I think that it was looked at in a really good and sensitive way and especially because Holly had done a lot of research into OCD and what it's like and talking to people who have suffered with mental health problems which was really good because a lot of the time I think a lot of authors just go in and think they know what they're talking about without actually researching it properly so I like that she <coughs> sorry had researched it really well but I think maybe it's because it's young adult fiction but the kind of the problems that the main character was facing felt a little bit childish I suppose not childish that's the wrong word but you know it was like love interests and going out to parties and wearing makeup and things like that and yeah to be fair when I was a teenager growing up that is the insecurities I had they were the things that I was worried about so I think for a teenage audience this is fantastic I think for me as a 22 year old reading this I wanted a bit more I don't a bit more kind of real life stuff about the worries that somebody has but I think this was written 
perfectly well for the audience that it's aimed at for young people and young people will definitely really really appreciate this book um, but I really love this I give it five out of five stars I think even though there was a couple of things that I would have maybe liked differently it was just outstanding and I really really loved it so well done to Holly Bourne for writing such a brave and honest book so that is Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne um, the next one again is going to be a book that kind of deals with mental health um, and it is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. I've got a proof copy here so I haven't actually got the final cover but the final cover looks something like this. Um, this was a book that I loved as you can see by the number of sticky notes that I've put kind of throughout the book. Um, and it's about a, a boy a, or a, yeah they are a boy and a girl because they're you know, a teenager boy and a teenage girl. Um, they both want to take their own lives, both for different reasons, and they both go up and they meet um, on the top of the school bell tower. And so it says, and so their story begins. And it's kind of about these two people who find each other and start to try and save themselves through each other and kind of make this pact to try and live life to the full and live life together and enjoy life. Um, but it is very truthful, it's very real, it's very. Um, I don't want to say dark because, but it is dark, it does show the truthful side of suicide and what it's like when you want to take your own life and what it's like when you feel suicidal and what it's like when you feel like you just don't want to be here anymore. Um, so that's the aspect that I loved about it is that it doesn't lie, it doesn't try and cover it up and make it a little bit more kind of happy and kind of sugarcoat it, it just goes there and tells you what it's like to want to kill yourself and I love that about this book because too many to, like so often people just skirt around it um and i think i mean i'm just flicking through some of the, the things i've highlighted and the bits that i've loved and just the way that the author writes is just it it blows me away like her writing is just sublime um i mean there's a there's a thing here um it says, I'm fighting to be here in this shitty, messed up world. Standing on the ledge of the bell tower isn't about dying. It's about having control. It's about never going to sleep again. Um, and it's just, her writing is just so lyrical and uh, I just love it so much. Um, and now I'm just getting lost because I just want to look at all of these quotes that I've highlighted. Um, but yeah, anyway, I just really cannot recommend this book enough. Um, I think everyone should read it. I think it should be on the curriculum. I think it's just one of those books that has to be read by everybody. Um, and I'm so glad that so many people have been talking about it and so many people have been reading it because it is such an important book. So that is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. Um, the next book is again one that covers a sensitive issue and that is the issue of a boy who wants to be a girl in The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson. And this is about a boy, as I just said, called... David? Yeah, David. And he wants to be a girl. Um, his parents think he's gay, he's always been bullied, um, but only his two best friends know the real truth. Um, and on the first day at his new school, um, a boy called Leo has the one goal to be invisible. Attracting the attention of the most beautiful girl in year 11 is definitely not part of the plan. When Leo stands up for David in a fight, an unlikely friendship forms, but things are about to get messy because at Eden Park School, secrets have a funny habit of not staying secret for long. And check out the end papers, people. How gorgeous are they? I just, oh I love this book so much, um, it just deals with teenage angst in the best possible way um, and it's kind of, it's hard because as a woman who was born a woman and feels like a woman I could never understand what it's like to be transgender or to think I was born in the wrong body and I think that with topics like this and especially with things like um lgbt fiction if you have never experienced it and i guess it's like mental health as well if you've never experienced it you can never fully understand what it's like and so i was thinking i'm not going to understand this i'm not really going to be able to kind of sympathize or empathize or relate to the character but i did and that was bizarre because i'm not a boy who wants to be a girl or a girl that wants to be a boy um, so Lisa Williamson has written a book here that is flipping amazing to be able to do that. Um, I think that this book again is one that is just, it's one that needs to be taught in schools, it's one that people just have to read because it's such kind of like a turning point in the genre I think. I've never read 
no I've never read another young adult book about oh there's my pyjamas there um, about a transgender protagonist I don't think I have no not that I can think of off the top of my head um, I'm, I'm sure there is some other fiction out there but this is the first one that I've ever read that has deal, dealt with these issues and like I say it's just amazing and it looks at kind of what normal is and kind of talking about whether you know we're all normal or what it's like to be normal when actually there is no normal nobody's normal that's just life and I was so excited because I met her at Yalk and I got my book signed which is super awesome and she said thanks a lot maybe thanks a something thanks a something for coming best wishes Lisa Williamson so that's super cute and I I just love that she signed it and I'm going to keep this forever because it's such a special book. So that is The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson. The next book is one that I'm hoping you haven't heard of because this is again one that I kind of picked up. When I used to work at Waterstones this is one of the books that came in to stop and I looked at it and I was like oh that's really cute, that's really pretty. I think I want to read it. So I bought a copy and it is We Are All Made of Molecules by Susan Nielsen or Susan Nielsen. I'm not quite sure how we're pronouncing that name but I mean it's gorgeous like the dust jacket has got um, see-through holes in it to go back so you can see on the back of the book so you can see through and it's just so pretty like the actual cover itself is just gorgeous sadly they didn't go crazy in the end papers um, it's just sadly just blue um, but the book is I'm gonna read the blurb because I'm rubbish at explaining this book but it's it says there are two sides to every story meet Stuart his geeky gifted but socially clueless his mum had died has died and he misses her every day meet Ashley she's popular cool but her grades stink her dad's come out and moved out but not far enough their worlds are about to collide Stuart and his dad are moving in with Ashley and her mum Stuart is trying to be 89.9% happy about it even as he struggles to fit in at his new school but Ashley is 110% horrified she, and she can't get used to her completely awkward home which is now filled with some rather questionable de decor and things are about to get a whole lot more mixed up when these two very different people attract the attention of school hunk Jared. Hysterically funny, tender and offbeat, We All Made of Molecules is about first impressions, false impressions and totally making the wrong impression. So that sums it up nicely. Um, basically about um, a boy and a girl who both kind of hate each other and they're forced together because their parents fall in love and they want to move in together and it's just quite funny, it's very comical, um, very moving, there's some really touching parts in it um, and yeah it's just a really lovely lovely book so if you haven't read it then I highly recommend picking that one up and then the last two I'm going to whisk through these two because I haven't got too much to say about them and I can tell this video is getting long so the first one is The Perfectionist by Sarah Shepherd. now or Sarah Shepherd, I'm not quite sure now she wrote the Pretty Little Lies series which if you haven't read already then read it it's amazing if you haven't watched the TV show then watch the TV show because that is amazing as well um but this is her duology, she's written a duology and the next book in this series is called The Good Girls which I haven't read yet which I hate myself for but I need to read it but this is called The Perfectionists and it's basically about these girls who are all together in a film class and they um, they hate this one boy in their school called Nolan I think his name is and they kind of want to just they just don't like him at all so they plot this really silly way of killing him if they could kill him if they had the chance how they would do it what they would do etc etc um just completely jokey but it turns out that nolan ends up dying and he gets or he dies in the way that these girls had planned and these guys are freaking frightened because none of the girls had done it none of them had actually killed him yet he had been killed in the exact way that these girls had planned and it kind of gets a bit freaky because they're like oh my god who did it who killed him so yeah really good really creepy good psychological thriller definitely worth checking out so that is a perfectionist by sarah shepherd and then the last book that i've got to show you is a book that i was super excited about and it wasn't the most amazing book i've ever read but it wasn't the worst book i've ever read and it seems weird to include this in my top favorites when i didn't love it as much as other books but I think it's important to I think it's a really important book and it's called Me and Mr J by Rachel McIntyre and this is about Lara who her life isn't very good um she's kind of ignored at home she doesn't really have the best like she hasn't got the best home life she faces bullying but um Mr Jagger lol um is a new teacher at school and she suddenly starts to fall in love with him and he starts to fall in love with her and it kind of explores the teacher student relationship and I don't want to get into this debate now because I'll be here forever but I have a lot of feelings about student teacher relationships um, and some of them are probably not going to be very popular I mean to me 
I, I recently read another book um, that's coming out next year called This Secret We're Keeping, which is about a man and a woman who used to date when they he was he was the teacher, she was the pupil, and they dated when they were at school. But then he went to jail, and then blah blah blah. And years later, they meet up again, and they really realise they have feelings for each other. And it's kind of like I got really annoyed in this book because I wanted them to be able to be together. They were in love, they loved each other, and they wanted to spend their lives together. And I wanted them to be able to do that, but they weren't because of the position that he was in as, as her teacher and because she was a student and it's really hard because I know that it's illegal and you shouldn't do it but like you can't help who you fall in love with and if you fall in love with somebody you should be allowed to be with that person surely but then it's hard because he was in a position of trust and he shouldn't have done it and it's it's really difficult because I don't know I just don't know like how I feel about it because I just don't know I can't I just honestly I wouldn't know what to do in that situation if, you know, if I had a daughter and she fell in love with her teacher or, you know, because if you've ever seen Pretty Little Lies, it happens in there as well. You know, Ezra Fitz falls in love with his pupil, Aria, and they form a relationship that lasts for a long time. They're very much in love. They, you know, they really appreciate each other. And it's just hard to be able to pass judgment on someone's relationship just because of their professional, their age gap or whatever, whatever, whatever. So, yeah, anyway, this really explores that in detail. It looks at how a girl falls in love with a teacher and what repercussions of that are and how it affects everyone around her. So, a really good book and definitely worth picking up, especially even if you just want to have a kind of another look into the argument of um, pupil-teacher relationships. So that is Me and Mr J by Rachel McIntyre. So that is my kind of haul or video of my top way books of this year like I say I could have included far more than I have done but I just wanted to keep it quite simple and show you books that hopefully you wouldn't have heard of um, I'm pretty sure you've probably all heard of Louise O'Neill and probably Lisa Williamson and probably Holly Bourne um, but hopefully maybe you know the, the others you haven't heard of yet um, but they are my favourite way books of this year so far um, I plan probably not to read any more way books this year most of the books I'm going to be reading up until the end of the year are going to be Christmas books so hopefully um, there won't be another book that I read before now and the end of the year that I'm like oh my god I should have included this book but yeah I'm waffling now so they are some fantastic books go check them out and I will see you again very soon have a nice week guys bye